Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. As you look around, you should notice you see a lot of triangles. That's right, because Pythagorean theorem can only be proven using right triangles. We identify a right triangle by the right angle that is formed when two sides meet perpendicularly at a perfect 90 degree angle. The theorem has three pieces, a squared, b squared, and c squared each corresponding with the three sides of a triangle. You have side A, side B, and side C. Now, when we actually look at the squared part, or the exponent, we're going to take A, side A in this case, and turn it into a square. We would do the same for B, and we'll do the same for C. I'm gonna show you this broken down by using units. Each orange square here is one square unit. I'm gonna build it three high and three across. I will fill it in and create a perfect square. This square will be three by three, which means it will hold nine square units. So A squared would be nine. We're gonna do the same for B. Side B is four long, so the square is four by four, which is 16 units. So A squared is nine units, and B squared is 16 units. But the question is, how do we find C, the diagonal side? We can't just count. Well, now we need to use the theorem. The theorem says I have a squared and b squared. That will help me find c squared if I know to combine a squared and b squared. This is what that looks like. Here I've created a larger square, which we will identify as c squared, by combining a squared and b squared. I'm proving that by showing you there are the exact same amount of square units, nine orange square units. In green, there are 16. I know I had to decompose to make that perfect square, but if you count the units, you will see there are 16 square units. So now let's think back to the theorem. We have nine units squared here. We have 16 units squared here. And if I would combine 9 and 16, I will get 25 units squared. Still hasn't helped us solve for that side though. Well, now let's think about how we even got these units. How did we get 9? Oh, that's right, we did 3 times 3. How did we get 16? 4 times 4. So how would we get 25? What can be multiplied to get 25? In this case, 5. 5 times 5 will give us 25 square units. We can look at that algebraically by filling it in. We fill in the 3 for A, the 4 for B, and the 5 for C. We will do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 does in fact equal 25. There is the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's solve it just doing it with algebra. So we're given two side lengths, three and four, we need to find the third. Well, the theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's fill in what we know. 3 squared, 4 squared, and C is unknown. 9 and 16, C is still unknown. 25, C is still unknown. Now we have C squared. How do we solve? Well, remember, we need the inverse operation. The inverse of X squared is the square root of X. You think about what would the root or the side measurement be to form that square. So we're going to take the square root of both sides to keep it equal, and the square root of 25 is broken down to 5 times 5, so C equals 5. Let's talk about a few misconceptions and some other helpful information. First, please never confuse A with A squared, B with B squared, and C with C squared. Those are different. 3 is not 9, 4 is not 16, and 5 is not 25. Make sure you keep those separate. Also, think about the commutative property. 9 plus 16 that equals 25, and 16 plus 9 equals 25. How does that work? Well, if A plus B equals C, 
then B plus A will also equal C. Why is that important to you? Well, A and B is here, but you could flip that, and this could be B, and this could be A. What you cannot mistake is where C goes. This is proven by saying if I take 25 and add it to 9, it's not going to produce a smaller number like 16. So we need to make sure the largest number is last. The reason this happens is because the two sides that form the right angle, remember those perpendicular lines? They are called the legs of the triangle. That gives us that 9 plus 16 or the 16 plus 9. However, the other side that is across is C. C is called the hypotenuse. Try to say that, hypotenuse. Very strange, I know, but you can call it C. Know that it is always located across from the right angle that is formed by the legs. C will always produce that larger number. Why? Because you're taking two and adding them together and giving you the biggest number. So C squared is always going to be your biggest number, but it's also going to be the longest side of your triangle. So remember, Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Thank you for watching.